Hi guys and welcome to tonight's live music tech webinar. We're looking at LFO's modulation this week. So this is quite a fun area of synthesis. Um, it's also probably one of the most complex areas because there's so many different configurations that you can you can kind of experiment and, and develop and kind of look at. So we're just going to take a kind of little tour into kind of where to find all these settings and some of the things you can play with and we'll, we'll just have a little play around as well which, which should be quite good fun. Um, once again during the Q&A se section of the show you can send us a tweet. We're going to do all of our Q&A stuff now just on Twitter so if you at Music Tech 101 uh, we'll give you a response during that se section of shows. If you've got any questions or if you've got any thoughts as well because like I said, there's some really good setups you can actually put out, put out, and it'd be quite nice to see what your thoughts are and kind of some of the things that interest you, really. So, hopefully we got really good sound tonight. Looks like everything's working, so let's crack on with the show. <clears throat> so, what are LFOs is the first part. How do LFOs work? So we're just going to experiment some of the settings, some of the configurations for the routing. We're going to look at subtractive synthesis and adding movement with LFOs. Then we're going to go over to the demonstration side of the presentation and then finish off with the Q&A. So nice and simple, but should be fairly interesting, which is good. So firstly, when we were covering the modulation effects, we did cover LFOs. And what we discussed during the modulation effects, like chorus, um, flange, phaser, and things like that, is that a lot of these effects were controlled using um, an LFO. So the, the LFO is called a low frequency oscillator. This operates at below 20 hertz. So you can't really hear it or it's inaudible to the human ear. And the reason for this is, is it's kind of used as a signal path rather than anything else. So you can actually just chain different elements onto the signal path. And, but, and because it's inaudible, it kind of it is a fantastic way of doing that. Um, Basically, you have two parameters. You have the rate, and the rate is the kind of, if I bring my mouse into play here, the rate is this part here, and it's how fast the sine wave or the actual wave that you're using moves through. So obviously, the closer together, um, the faster that's going to move. And you also have the intensity or the depth, which is how much modulation you're going to apply. Um, once again, this, this can be routed to many, many different things, and we're going to look at different ways in which this, this can kind of happen. But... Ultimately, it's just a signal path that's kind of chained into other things. So, <clears throat> the basic parameters of an LFO, you've got the rate, which I said before, is this kind of speed of frequency and how fast it moves through the cycle per second. Now, a cycle per second can be seen from this point here all the way to this point here, in which case it does the first cycle, okay? So, one cycle per second or many cycles per second. The depth, once again, is how high the modulation goes. Um, distance from top to bottom. Now, the routing is something we haven't really discussed before. So let's just have a look at the, the routing kind of specifics for synthesis. Now, with this, you have a target. So the target is what do you want the LFO to control? Um, so you, when you're routing, you think first about the target. Sometimes this is called destination. Um, so you might say, okay, I want the target to be my cutoff. Now the source, and the reason you have a source is because most LFOs or most synthesizers have multiple LFOs. So hence you, you have to kind of say, okay, which LFO do you want um, the target to come from? Okay, so which LFO is going to control that target? And then finally, on most of these, you also have an, an amount setting. Now... Because the cutoff, say for instance you were using the cutoff as a target, say the cutoff is set in the middle somewhere, you set the amount either minus numbers or, or plus numbers. And what this allows you to do is attenuate the, the cutoff either higher or lower by a certain amount, de depending on the kind of routing you do. And that's kind of what it does. So it gives you this kind of automation effect, if you like, but it's, it's just a consistent continuous automation and that's based on the LFO signal so hopefully that kind of explains a little bit it's quite it's quite I mean there's loads of topics online to kind of cover LFO so if it did if it didn't you know do some more research but that's the kind of basics it's just basically an electronic signal that you can actually route things to because you can't hear it okay so next one we're 
The LFO is to add movement, and it is a form, it is part of the, the subtractive synthesis chain. Now let's just reiterate what we've looked at so far in this series. So we started off with the oscillators, which is the first part of the subtractive synthesis chain. Then we looked at the enveloping, which was the shape that you could make the oscillators in. Then we look at filters. So looking at cutoff and resonant high high pass filters, low pass filters, and shaping the oscillator again, but this time with frequency modulation. Um, and then today's one is just looking at adding movement to that sound, okay? So here's some examples. So if you do the cutoff, you are you're going to be adding movement to this this frequency envelope, okay? If you wanted to add an LFO to the same oscillator wave, you'd actually change the shape of the oscillator and combine it with whatever shape the LFO is, which is, is really interesting. And then the amplifier is quite an obvious one to understand, where you can kind of make it duck in and out of volume, which is really quite a cool effect. You also have things like pan as well. And if you look at this, this long list here from the ES2, you can do a multitude of things okay so you can also pan so you can make it pan from left to right and things like that and we'll have a look at all these things and we'll try and find the the most effective thing ultimately it is about experimentation you'll find things that you really like and you'll find things and without this experimentation it does you know you, you have to you have to try these things out um, and that's the the beauty of it it's good fun so different synthesizers so how they organize it so we've looked at this this is my tau electro which is my favorite teaching synth and it's so obvious to kind of understand it because it goes back to um these little modules so back back in the day when i don't know they were putting all, all the modules together and chaining them all together and they, they kind of made it look a bit like that so you've got this oscillator one oscillator two and it follows this path oscillator three then the mix of all these oscillators together plus another oscillator here, which is the noise. Then you have this filter. Then you have this envelope. And then finally, the final part of the chain before it gets to the output or before it gets to the actual your ears is this LFO. And you can see here we've got two LFOs. And we have this rate and we have this intensity. Okay, so sometimes it's called depth, sometimes it's called intensity. You can also use the destination here, which this one here is, is set to pulse wave one, which if you look at oscillator one, you'll see the pulse wave just here. So this this particular LFO is got a destination of this dial here. So if I was to dial this up a little bit and maneuver some of these dials, you'd actually hear that kind of wobbling that synth that oscillator a bit, okay? Um you can also set the rate, which is a really interesting function because it allows you to synchronize with the piece, especially in modern doors, it takes the the tempo that you're in and it synchronizes it to the tempo so you can create some really nice effects that are completely rhythmically in time which is, is a brilliant thing and you can see from this one here you've got this the destination of the cutoff okay so the cutoff is coming all the way over to here and it's controlling this filter cutoff dial here nice and easy to understand um, and you can play around with it if you click on these boxes here with the tower electro it also gives you a big list of, of other things that you can control the prologue is something I haven't used for a long time, so I'm a bit, bit, bit rusty with this one, but the prologue is, is Cubase's kind of premium synthesizer, and it is absolutely fantastic. I love it. It's got two LFOs, so you can see by this dotted line that this is LFO 1 and this is LFO 2. They're done in these little tabs, so you actually can change the envelopes. The, the beauty of this one is you can actually chain multiple things to a single um LFO. You can do the same with, with others, but it's just the way it's laid out that's that's quite interesting. You also get control over the kind of wave you want to use for the LFO um, and some of the other kind of parameters. But once again, we've got this rate and we've got this intensity dial here. So it's called something different again, speed and depth. Um, and you can see this one here is, is controlling oscillators 1's pitch. This one is also controlling oscillator 2's pitch. So it's doing both of those at the same time. Over here, we've got a bit of panning going on. We're controlling the cutoff plus the volume. So, you know, they're putting these combinations together to create some really interesting kind of movement in their LFOs and their synthesis sound. All of which, of course, can be saved as a preset. So if you do end up kind of creating these really unique sounds for yourself, just like what we were talking about when we were doing the multi-channel effects 
um, presets. You can actually save these for yourself and actually call them up so you can use them whenever you want. So you can have these signature sounds, which is brilliant. And then the one that I'm currently favouring, which is the ES2, which is actually just the best way of routing that I know of so far. So you have your target here, you have your source here, you also have a via button, which allows you to kind of say, okay, what do you want it to pass through? So this one here has got the modulation wheel, so it has to kind of LFO, has to, before it gets to the target, pass through the, the modulation wheel, which is, which is a fantastic way to actually tap it in using your keyboard. Um, you've also got this green dial here, which allows you to kind of, control the amount so if this was routed to the cutoff this would be your center point here so wherever the cutoff is so for instance if the cutoff was here for instance and you pushed it up you'd kind of get this modulation effect from this point here all the way up and then back again you know or if you want to bring into the minus you could also do that some really powerful features and it's it's fairly simple to understand and I love the fact the way it's laid out it just when I first looked at it I was kind of like what the what am I going to do with that? <laughs> but it's, it is actually the most simplest thing to understand, which is really nice. And after a lot of playing, you kind of get used to kind of doing it, doing these things and, and just, well, experimenting. And that's what it's all about, really. OK, so we're going to pop over to the demonstration side of the show. And I've just got a little bit of demonstration to do tonight. So hopefully you guys can take away some good ideas. We're just going to look at three synths tonight and the way that they've kind of set up their LFOs and then we can just try some routing options using the ES2 which is which is the one that I, I kind of prefer at the moment is for, for logic it's definitely the one that kind of makes the most sense so just bear with me while I swap over <coughs> excuse me okay so we're in logic and we've got a couple of simps. So we've got the ESP setup, which is the most basic kind of way of doing the LFO. So let's show you this one first of all. So here's the here's the ESP. And you've got this kind of vibrato or or wah sound. Now the vibrato kind of moves in pitches, whereas the wah sound really moves like a bandpass filter. So it just whizzes through the frequencies. So what you've got here is zero, which is off so let me just play this now so as you can see there's very little modulation there i think maybe the sound has a little bit but that's to do with the, the way the envelope shaped i guess you also have this speed dial so this kind of determines how fast the lfo works so i mean that's as simple as an lfo gets really it does only have one so let's just try this on the vibrato setting set all the way over to vibrato and we'll start with very slow and it might pop so just be careful with your ears nice and obvious what that's just done and then it's going to bounce back up so let's make it a bit faster <laughs> it sounds like a rubber band effect doesn't it so make it a bit faster but not so intense okay and you can almost hear it following that path and that will keep going because of the sustain levels here it will just keep going I know it's died down ever so slightly but it will I press it now, it should stay the same volume. Okay, so you can hear that that is kind of just wobbling that pitch. And it's quite a, a big pitch movement, whereas the whereas the wah wah is just this kind of idea of a band pass. So it's quite nice. So let's just have a look at the wah wah on its intense factor. Very slow. And that's a really nice effect. Let's let's make it really fast, but not so intense. <laughs> Have you ever wondered how dubstep's done? <laughs> there you go. Did you hear it? Nice little wobble bass for you. <laughs> and what I sometimes do is I actually patch this into my keyboard. My keyboard's. Um, I don't know, the Emu, some keyboard 49, and it's got all these pots on it, and you can actually use the learn function on Logic to actually just kind of control these, and if you want to get these kind of rates where they change and they create these wobble bases, you can do that very, very simple. So that's quite nice, and, that, and that's fairly simple to understand, and that's just a, a simple sine wave LFO, and it has two functions here. It just has two ways of being routed. It has a pitch 
and it has kind of like this bandpass filter kind of effect and then the speed so nice and easy to understand the ES1 is probably not as easy to understand but we'll try and walk through it best as possible now what you have here is this section from this point here and all the way over to here now what you can do here is you have the different wave forms that you can select so you can you can choose from all kinds of sawtooths and square waves or noise filters so let's just leave it on this we can try the triangle wave let's try that one okay and then we can set up the rate as well now over here once again it has parameters that you can tune into so you can tune into the pitch which would be your keyboard you can tune into the pulse width modulator so probably patched in something like this I can't find it on here um, you've got your mix you've got your cutoff you can actually do your resonance volume and then you can also set the width for it. this is quite interesting the way it does the width here so you have two dials that you can actually pull around and you can also set it up so that it reacts with this side which is this envelope parameter it's a very basic envelope where you have this decay and you have a full envelope and you can actually say okay so I want it to be routed into here and you like for here I've set up the cutoff at that the same so let's have a little play like I said it's not as obvious to understand as the one before but let's hear what you reckon <laughs> set it to the mix value and that's that's giving me the effect that I wanted let's do the resonance volume should have a bit more something's not quite right here so I haven't set this up completely the way it should be let's just do two volumes and let's see if we can duck that down a little bit let's make it react with the decay a bit better there it is you can see after a little bit of tweaking you can see it kind of works it's not it's not the most intuitive interface and I suspect if I read through the manual I could probably get get my hand around this but it, it's quite yeah it's not the most intuitive interface whereas the ES2 for my money is a lot easier to understand so there you go there's a basic run from that one let's move on to the ES2 and just see what we can do with this one so here is the ES2 now, I've currently set it up so that it's in its absolute default settings. It just has a single sine wave, and you can see here it's, it's only routed to this oscillator one, if I can get it back in that corner again. <laughs> there it is. So it's only got this oscillator one, which is a sine wave. I've got no routing patch. I've turned all the routing off, and I've got this sustain high, so it should just play a very basic note, very clean. I've got the cutoff quite high. I'll turn it down a little bit. But I am only blending this one oscillator so sorry this one filter so I'm not using anything else and you can hear that's very very clean you can see that, that you can hear that that's a clean sine wave and now this is the power this is why it's so interesting so easy to use so let's turn on our target so our targets gonna be the cutoff one okay so cutoff one is this one here this is this down you can see I've patched this into the middle now the next thing we're going to leave via alone for now, but you can see it's I've gone for the LFO two. The re I mean we've got one LFO here and we've got one LFO here. The reason I've gone for the LFO two is because if you want to sync it to your actual song, the LFO LFO two allows you to do that really easy. If you put it downwards, you can see on this dial here one to sixty four, okay, and you keep putting it down one to thirty twos, 
and you see it actually just divides itself up very very evenly without kind of normally you just get the hertz value which is not as easy to kind of sync up whereas these values will sync up to your piece every single time which is really what you're looking for when you're kind of in the in the heart of doing something off the bat of something so this is why I patch it in you don't have the same parameters with the LFO one um, it's a lot more intuitive you've got a lot more things going on but actually the LFO two for me is just easier now in its DC settings if I press a key now I will hear nothing okay okay so I'm pressing my key you can see I'm pressing it here and there's nothing because DC is just cancelling everything out because it's waiting for my signal okay so let me just start by in the center and let's just take it down so this should be a very basic wave okay because basically what this is doing is it's saying okay um, tell me how much you want to modulate and I'm just saying leave it in the middle so it's saying well you don't want me to do anything then do you, you just want me to stay in the middle so Pull it up and then hopefully you should hear something a bit more exciting. Then we pull it up a bit more, make it a bit more rapid. And let's just make it a little slower so you can hear it a bit better. Put it down. And it just changes the amount of intensity that you're adding to that kind of automation effect if you like. Okay. And we can go the opposite direction as well. So it's basically when you're in the plus direction, it's taking it up here. Okay by whatever amount you give it. So if you put it in the middle here, it's saying, okay, I'm gonna take it to this point and then back again, okay? And now you can hear that that is going downwards. So let's go back up so you can hear the difference. Back down so you can hear the difference. Okay, so what else can we do with this? So that's quite interesting, same dubstep effect as well. So that's quite nice. Um, we can obviously change the settings, but let me just show you, you can actually change the wave. Now, with this one, you have these dials here, which re relate to the wave for the LFO2, and these dials here, which relate for the wave for the LFO1, okay? So if I click on this one, we're gonna get a different wave. with the noise effects so there you go so you can change that lots and lots and lots so we've just done the cutoff and let's just push this up so you can hear the difference when they actually do push it up we'll bring it down so it's a bit more radical So the other thing you can do is set the resonance one as well. So if we come back up to here, and let's just try and find the resonance one, Reso one. So this a bit be a bit more on off effect. This one. Have I done the right one? That doesn't seem to be affecting it very much. There it is. Just hear it just very subtly, very kind of in your face when I hit the key, but not much else. So let's move on to another one. Okay, what else should we do? We can do both them, both the cutoffs together or individually. Now let's do the pan one. This should be quite interesting. So this you should be able to hear that it goes from left to right. up there and that's quite a nice way of creating this auto filtery kind of sound um, or auto pan sorry it's but yeah I mean that's quite nice and you can see that, that that's all being controlled you can actually hear the wave or the path that it's following and it's so consistent okay like I say you can do a few more let's do a volume one um, is there a volume or should I just use the amp? Let me have a little look. We have the volume for the oscillator 1. It should just be the whole volume anyway. Because I've only got the uh, the oscillator 1 turned on, that should be the volume for everything. Yeah, there you go. Or 
can change this rate in which it kind of the vibrato happens. That's just such a fantastic effect. That's, I mean, the amount of fun that you can have here. And that's why you've got all these other routings as well. If you want to route more than one thing in, so every time you press a, a note, you kind of, you can, you, well, you can just do so much with it. I don't want to confuse the issue massively too much. But also, if you're unsure about a few of these things, you can also come to the presets. I'm not going to change it now because this is, this is, took me a bit of time to get it back to absolute zero so I could demonstrate this tonight. But, Basically, if you come to any of these, you'll see the way that their modulation is set up. So you can kind of dissect it if you want to, to kind of get it working for yourself and see how all these things work. It's, I mean, it's interesting. I think we're going to leave it there. I'm going to leave the rest for you guys to play around with and just have a little look at. But that's kind of demonstrated the point of what LFOs do within the subtractive synthesis nature. Um, and the... <clears throat> the versatility and the kind of flexibility is massive. Um, the only thing I can say again and again and again is just try it out. Try it out for yourself and let's give it your best shot. Now, let's go back to my presentation. So just give me two seconds while I switch the screens over. Okay, almost there. Okay, so hopefully you found that interesting. Next week, we're going to be putting it all together. So we're going to be creating some nice, interesting sounds. And we'll, we'll actually, we'll do some common techniques for what you'd find in the A2 exam. One of the A2 questions a few years back was, um, using subtractive synthesis, create the following base, bass line. So that's what we'll kind of do. We'll, we'll have a listen to some bass lines and we'll have a listen to some percussive sounds or some drones or simp, other synth sounds. And we'll try and recreate them as best as possible. Um, if you've got any thoughts about that, please chip in with them. Now, give me two seconds. I've I've done the ultimate again. I've forgotten to log into Twitter, which always takes me an absolute age to get to get going. So let me just do this. And then the spelling goes all wrong. <laughs> Here we go, we get there. So all the all the questions tonight are on Twitter, so at Music Tech 101 if you've got any questions, and I'll try my best to, to answer them. Now, it looks like we don't have any at the moment, but I'll just hang out for a second. Um, so what have we got? We've got put, putting it all together next week, and then we're just going to go over some of the more common forms of synthesis, which should be a fairly basic one in two weeks' time, just to round the whole experience off. What we're looking at for next term is doing some sampling tutorials. So, I mean, let us know what you think about that. And we're just going to look at sampling in depth and just kind of do a, a basic series. It'll only be four weeks next term. I don't think it's particularly a long term, but we'll do four weeks on the basics of sampling, okay? So that kind of will round up quite a lot of the, the stuff that you guys need in need for your music production tasks and whatnot. So it looks like we're all very quiet tonight, so I might just round that up there. Well, it looks like we had a few people in tonight, so thanks for um, joining us live. Really appreciate that. It keeps the uh, momentum going, and um, hopefully you're enjoying this. If you've got any thoughts about the show, please let me know. Also, we're looking for guest speakers, so if you ever want to kind of join in and, and do a hangout with us, that'd be brilliant as well. So becoming a guest speaker or actually talking about this stuff, the more the merrier. So once again, you can contact me, contact at musictechstudent.co.uk. You can join our newsletter at mymail.musictechstudent.co.uk or Twitter, Google or Facebook. And all the webinars can be found, all previous recordings plus this one can be found at musictechstudent.co.uk forward slash musictechwebinars. Um, thanks for joining us tonight, guys. I hope you found that useful and I will see you guys next week.